Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me today at Band Auto Group in Los Angeles to go for a drive in the SF90 Assetto Fiorano. Now with my SF90 Stradale on order, I'm still going through the final stages of the specification, but this is the car with the Fiorano package presented in Bianco Avus that today I'm gonna to get an opportunity to take out for a drive to get some feedback on what it's like with the differences that come with that optional upgrade and decide whether I'm gonna go for it myself. So I'm gonna take this out. I run through the specification of this particular car. We'll have a little look around at this very cool spot here at Band Auto, where I am at the moment and some of the other cars around and take this for a little run out towards the canyons to do a couple of miles to see what it's all about. When the SF90 was first introduced about two years ago now, when Ferrari pulled the wraps off the car, I was immediately intrigued by it. A thousand horsepower hybrid technology series production at a fairly sensible price, considering what it actually offers. I did a spec, but didn't go for it at the time. And then of course the world went into this very bizarre situation, but more recently locked it in myself after a test drive where I really got to get a first feeling for what the SF90 Stradale offered out at Fiorano on the roads local to Maranello, the home town of Ferrari and to be honest caught the bug and at the moment going through the specification now I've got some pretty clear ideas of what I'm going to go for but one of the big questions is about the Assetto Fiorano this optional package named after Ferrari's test track in Maranello the Fiorano circuit which brings a more sporty setup for example you have a specific set of multimatic dampers which mean you have a much more hardcore ride in exchange with that you do sacrifice the opportunity to be able to have the lift system which means you can't lift it up you also get more by way of air you have this integrated carbon fiber lip spoiler piece around towards the rear and the interior features much more carbon fiber as well carbon door cards and a lot of upgrades as standard for example the carbon fiber wheels the carbon fiber bucket seats on the inside and we'll have a look at those in a moment so this is in Bianco Avus the white paint with the contrasting Nero roof. You have a mix of gloss black accents around the car in fact. So you can have it dual tone or you could have it single tone depending how you would prefer. You do get the gloss black mirror arms, this piece around the front of the windshield and back here as well. This is gloss black. You can opt to have this in carbon fiber, but I think for mine, I'm gonna leave it like this just to have that black theme running through. Down in the engine bay, you've got a four liter twin turbocharged V8 along with the electric motors, making a thousand horsepower, as I said, four wheel drive, the ability to drive the car in E mode, fully electrically, which is really quite fun to be honest, 25 kilometers, about 15 miles or so of electric range in total. Let's come around though and show you inside this particular car. We've got the yellow scud shields. This is the new style Ferrari key, which I always think looks very, very nice. Open this up. I can show you the spec that we have inside here. Some of the red accents, the red leather, that we have for these carbon fiber racing seats. The Assetto Fiorano, as I mentioned, you get the door plaques here, the satin carbon for the door cards. We've got a very high spec here with more optional carbon as well, going for the contrast, in fact, between the satin and the gloss. We've got that 16 inch curved digital dashboard. We've got the touch panel steering wheel. We've got the H control panel in the center, but I'm really intrigued to see what this is actually like. So what we're gonna do then is get the car started in just a second. We'll take it on out and go and get a proper feel for what this is about. In fact, let me take a seat inside here. We've got the XL carbon racing bucket seats in this particular example. We've got the upgrade sound system. Effectively, you touch in the steering wheel, everything wakes up for us. You get a nice animation, in fact, on the dashboard only a handful of miles on this particular car. You could go into E-Drive and then you could start it electrically or in hybrid and we'll go through these different modes in the Manatino when we're driving. Let's start this up. It's fun the way it starts actually off the electric motors. So let's go and drive and see what the Assetto Fiorano SF90 is like and think a little bit more about my specification. And first impressions, this car is brilliant. We're actually driving at the moment from Santa Monica around towards Malibu beside the Pacific coast, a stunning place to drive and some awesome roads up ahead of us. But I've got it in hybrid, just driving along. And this is where right now we're in E-Drive. It's obviously effectively an electric car in this setup. And you just, it just cruises. It does it so gently. You do notice that the Assetto Fiorano suspension is significantly firmer 
than the regular car you don't have that comfort to the ride but obviously the flip side of that is if you go to the racetrack it's going to be much more dynamic as a result i have had once or twice already something i noticed before which is when you go for the left hand indicator the lower part of your thumb catches the voice recognition button and the car asks you what you wanted to ask of it and that's a slightly funny one but the car just it sounds good when you've got the engine running fire it up very quickly just putting it into the performance driving mode and then qualifying up towards the top or you go the other way and put it in full e-drive and the integration of all of this technology is super smooth and well thought out and that's why when i drove it for the first time i knew that this had to happen we will however when the lights change get around here up towards effectively a bit of a canyon road to put it through some corners where the difference in the suspension will become much more evident and get to try out that side of it but like this you've got a front wheel drive electric ferrari with 200 or so horsepower which for just driving around in the real world is plenty with the electrical whir going on so for driving into town or something then alternatively pop it into hybrid and when the car feels it wants to start the engine up again it will do and it kicks in very smoothly and that's what I really quite like about it anyway let's get to some slightly twisty roads slightly further up the coast and we are now on a canyon road still at the moment in hybrid which means driving in electric if you want the engine to come on you can either go into performance where it kicks into life or up into qualifying and between the two different modes basically you have a different consumption of the electric power of the amount of battery and charge that you have depending how you want to drive you can also then turn the manatino up into race we're in sport before it just makes the shifts a small amount faster and you've got the toggle in the center to go between automatic and manual but just feathering on the throttle you already realize quite how much power this car has available and also how well it turns in unfortunately we've got a fair bit of traffic in front of us here but you get a sense of its dynamic capabilities immediately one of my favorite things about the sf90 is that you don't need to be going mach 10 to enjoy driving this car many modern cars you really need to have your foot absolutely pinned to get some liveliness out of it whereas this is actually quite fun to shift mid-range halfway through the throttle through the rev range you don't need to go up to the red line every single time because if you do it's so fast that it's quite frankly a little bit silly and so far beyond what you can do in a legal capacity <laughs> at least out on the road so you don't feel the same desire to do so and it just makes it a car that's more fun to drive at road speeds which is why i'm effectively seeing the sf90 for me as more a road car than a track car in my garage at least with the senna and the ford gt and the 675 lt gt black series for example those are very much the track weapons and the sf90 is more going to be if i can say this say this the daily supercar something like that the supercar that i can drive into the center of london in electric mode as opposed to absolutely flooring everywhere although i am quite surprised that the ride of this while firmer than standard is not over the top it's still fairly manageable it's not as hardcore as i had envisioned after a fair bit of getting lost up in the hills through some of the residential areas going now through some very tight twisty corners on the way back down is when you realize that despite the weight of the batteries and the electric motors and everything on that side of the powertrain in the sf90 it feels like a very agile nimble car and a surprisingly comfortable car the terrain up here the tarmac is not exactly the smoothest in the world and despite the Assetto Fiorano it's actually surprisingly calm and comfortable and obviously I've got the engine still in performance at the moment as we go down this is just spectacular up here and then it happens to do that as well you need a go-kart for this place instinctively think that a 1000 horsepower car should be so much fun in this kind of environment and of course as I said this is in performance mode if I actually pop it down now into e-drive <laughs> the unusual silence and a stop sign so we must come to a complete stop and away we go again 
called the Very Very Odd Electrical Whirr. But how bizarre is this then, to be driving in an electric Ferrari on a mountain pass? This is one of the oddest... There we go. The car did it. It hears you saying the name of the manufacturer and thinks you're talking to it as well and says, sorry, I don't understand, which is a bit of an oddity about it. This is so bizarre. You have a strange sense of how quickly you're moving as well because of the lack of combustion engine sound. Yes, there isn't the most, and it also intervenes a lot with effectively traction control, limiting the amount of power you can put down. It keeps thinking I'm talking to it, but look at this view in front. That is spectacular. What a stunning place to be. Now, if we go the other way, and go all the way into qualifying mode, this is where you get maximum attack. And if you put your foot down out of a corner, it is a ballistic missile, to say the least. I don't think on these kind of roads I'm going to have an opportunity to do that. Because it's just too fast. Yeah, it builds up speed way too fast for these kind of tight, twisty roads. And then you're reliant upon the anchors. What an awesome place to drive in an SF19. You can feel how good the steering and handling is of the Assetto Fiorano. And even though it's bumpy, it rides so smoothly over it. With character from the exhaust, I'm having to concentrate here. The car is so fast. Just wow. Back down on the coast. This thing is so fast. It's, it's just silly fast, as I said, in a way that you don't really need it. Now, one consideration I have that we've not had to touch on today is that to actually get into my garage at home, I have to go down quite an aggressive angle on the ramp. And without a lift system, that would be near on impossible. And as I said, with the Assetto Fiorano, you can't have the lift. There is no opportunity to be able to add it. Actually, we should go back into hybrid now and back into automatic and back into sport on the Manatino. I love having that level of configurability, being able to change all of the different settings. But fundamentally, the Assetto Fiorano, I think, doesn't inconvenience usage to the extent that I thought it would. We've managed to avoid scraping on the front through some of the tighter hairpins and corners where often you might have a little scrape. Haven't had any issues with it coming through some of the dips and bumps that we've driven over today, which has surprised me. I did think it would be more impractical than it is. Obviously, there's a significant upcharge uh, by ordering the package, but I'm less opposed to it than I thought I was going to be earlier. I don't think I'm going to choose it for mine just because of the usability benefits and having a slightly smoother ride for this kind of driving. You do feel all of the little bumps in the ground up through the seat in this, similarly to other top-end supercars, the Senna, for example. It, it's very, very similar to that at the end of the day, but if you have the softer suspension, it's more like a 720S with a smooth ride, very comfortable ride. So I think that fits more with the purpose of what I intend to do with the car. I just love driving along like this in the full electric mode and just the car doing its thing and you find that you don't run out of electric charge. It, it has a good balance and computer management to make sure that it keeps the charge up. Just my overwhelming takeaway being back at the wheel of an SF90 Stradale is that this is a really exciting car. And I was a little bit anxious to get back behind the wheel because of thinking maybe I won't be so happy with it second time out and is it the right move? It's, you know, it's a big commitment, it's an expensive car, but it's absolutely brilliant. It's a phenomenal piece of equipment. Just this technology, which is straight out of hypercar generation, performance that's straight out of hypercar generation, looks, especially from the back of the car, that are very hypercar as well in something that carries a significantly lower price tag. And that's perhaps one of the craziest things about the SF90 Stradale, is that Ferrari probably could have charged double what they do charge, and people would still have bought these. It is really a brilliant thing. It's a really, really good car. We're back at Band Auto Group, and honestly, this car 
is just something else. I want to show you a few more things about it, but very quickly, a couple of the other cars that are here at the moment. We have the Mustang Eleanor style with the approval plaque. We've got Lamborghini Urus, Hummer H2, F-150 Raptor, previous one with the V8, and we've got a Continental GT Speed convertible as well, and a little Aventador SVJ. But this, as a car to drive, honestly, seriously impressive. I was very anxious that second time out, it might perhaps not live entirely up to my expectations, but let's just say I have not been disappointed driving this today. I think it's a stunning thing. I love the contrast of all of the carbon against the bright white of this particular car. The dual tone is certainly something that works for me, especially the way that Ferrari have created this wraparound over the back, running over the top of the engine bay. And just looking in here at how deep the engine sits right down at the bottom, really, really special. To show you a couple more things about it though, gives you a lot of information through the displays in here. I can spend forever running through the different systems and I'll do a lot of that when I have my car and explaining more about the ownership and how all the configuration works. The key that tucks away here in the centre, so when you're driving, you can pop this with the yellow Ferrari badge from the front just in there. Open up the front storage. It's not exactly the best, let's say, road trip car on the coupe as opposed to the Spider. You do have a little bit of space behind the seats, just to show you very quickly. If you fold the seats forwards here, or let's say if you have the comfort seats, you can opt to have this carbon backboard but there's a bit of space behind so you can fit in let's say two small soft bags just behind you if you want to be able to get a little bit of luggage back in there so that certainly helps and then at the front as I said it's quite a small bonnet storage area let me see if I can find a catch it looks just under there you get the personalization specifications the charging kit and your usual accessories and first aid kit and then the RACE electric system, the two motors that you have on the front axle that give you that amazing drive, that agility, that early power, that early torque, and the four wheel drive system, which just makes this car be able to go down some of those canyon roads with such effortless ease. This is full carbon fiber on the bonnet, obviously fairly lightweight, despite having the battery system that allows you to have that electric range and the all electric driving mode, which obviously does add some weight and it'll be interesting to see how the 296 GTB that's arriving soon as well stacks up to the SF90. It's 170 horsepower down, it's all the power to the rear wheels, it doesn't have the electric motors to the front, so it's quite a different car. But this, if it wasn't the price that it is, you would call a hypercar. This level of technology at this performance level is very, very much up there. Only a couple of years ago, this would have been quite literally the fastest thing on the market. I really like the look of the Assetto Fiorano pack here with the rear wing. If you have the standard car, effectively you don't have this ducktail flip. It's basically sitting flat towards the back edge, which is a little bit cleaner in terms of the design, but obviously slightly less sporty. I will certainly opt though to have all of the carbon fiber for the diffuser for the air vent pieces that you have here, which splits the air between two different coolers inside. And then also around at the front, the lower carbon that you have wrapping around towards the edge. And you realize how much aero there is here. You can see some of the different guiding vanes that it has there, this space underneath the headlight that wraps around underneath the nose, through the center of the car as well. The openings that you have actually on the bonnet section. It is a car that has a clean appearance over the top with a lot of clever aero and technology underneath the skin, basically making it look very nice while being incredibly functional as well. And hence why when you take this onto a racetrack, it is very, very, very fast. I'd be interested to know how much difference it makes between the Assetto Fiorano and the regular SF90 Stradale. I'll have to try that at some point in the future. So my takeaway from driving this is that the Assetto Fiorano isn't as inconvenient as I thought it might be. The car does have this very long front nose, but we've not scraped anywhere that I've gone with it just now. The only problem is if you do need a lift system to get into, say, a low garage somewhere, you're not going to be able to do it with one of these as it is. The other thing is that I suspect perhaps we'll see a pista type variant, a version speciale as Ferrari will call it, of this car, an even more track focused car. So to me, the Stradale, which is literally the Italian word for road, is the road spec. So I'm gonna go with more of a road configuration, the more comfy seats, non-Assetto Fiorano, and more 
of an elegant spec as opposed to an aggressive sporty spec. Maybe in the future, there'll be the hardcore one. Who knows, maybe I'll be lucky enough to have one as well, but I'm certainly going coupe. We'll just see exactly what happens. For today though, a huge thanks to the guys here at Band Auto Group for the opportunity to take this out for a quick run on the canyons here in Los Angeles, California to experience the SF90 again and to keep me very excited for the imminent arrival of my Schmimobile. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching. As always guys, I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.